All right, VIK, come up here. <laughs> you gotta hold the mic for us, okay? Because I can't hold it the same. Yeah, you know how to play that? You're the one who said you knew it. <laughs> <laughs> Pressure's on. Was it Adam he said? Yeah. Hey, me and Adam. Wait, what's, excuse me. What's the score? Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. How about you sing with us, all right? Come on up here, hold the mic up to us. What are you doing, VIK? Here, you sit right here. There you go. All right, hold it up. Hold it up. I can't even go back. Hello, my name is Regret. I'm pretty sure we have met every single day of your life. I was just going inside. Don't clap. You'll throw us off. Hello, my name is Steve. But you can sing with us. I know you recognize me. Just when you think you can win, I'll drag you right back down again. Take you lost all. Adam's bringing it. Come on, say. Oh, these are the voices. These are the lies that I have believed in for the very last time. Hello, my name is Child of the One True King. I've been saved, I've been changed, I have been set free. Amazing grace is the song I sing. Hello, my name is Child of the One True King. Yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Woo. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. Dude, that was awesome, man. That gives me chills, man. You rocked it. One more time for Adam. And for Vic. Good job, Vic. Sure thing, as I stick these people with thorns. Yeah, you better ask them a question. You made a whole list. Who else has a question? Oh, you didn't ask your question? I talk too much. Oh, cool. I heard, like, just through the grapevine that you were possibly maybe looking at a doctor. Child, the one true king. Amen. I think that's a fitting place for us to close. Thank you guys so much for such a special time. This is amazing. And I, I want to just close. Can we just pray together? And since you guys are my VIPs, uh, I want us just to pray for everybody else who's about to walk in the doors, okay? Um, people are going to be walking and carrying brokenness, carrying difficult circumstances. Um, we, we don't know, but God knows every single person who's holding a ticket. And I believe that ticket that they're holding is a ticket to walk into the doors and enter into the presence of God. And we're believing that something special is gonna take place. So can we just do that? Let's pray right now. God, we love you. I thank you for all these amazing people, these kiddos in front. I thank you for my VIK. I thank you for Adam for singing with me tonight. I thank you for the folks who brought me their stories and the girls in the back who brought in those flowers. I thank you for the birthday boy in the back. God, I'm just, I see your glory shining on every one of these people's faces. I see your beauty shining through them, God. You've created each one of them and you have a plan for them. I believe you've got a plan for tonight as well. And so right now we just commit this entire night from start to finish to you. I pray that our worship will be pleasing in your sight. And I just pray that if someone's coming in the doors broken, that they will find a powerful reminder through every single song that there is a healer who can meet us at our most broken and turn things around. And we can find healing 
from our lives. God, we thank you. Thanks for calling us our, your children. We are so humbled and honored to be called your children. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hey, God bless you guys. Um, I know they're going to get you to your seats, and you guys will have the best seats in the house. So thank you all so much. We got one seat up here. You get all the You 
you are mine and you shine for me too and I love you yesterday and today and tomorrow I say again and again I love you more I am so excited to be in South Bend, Indiana this evening This place packed out tonight. This is amazing. It's amazing also that tonight is an, in, uh, an indoor concert instead of an outdoor concert. <laughs> Holy cow, how do you guys live here? I do not know. This is how much I love thee that I would come to thee in the middle of winter. This is the greatest spring break destination in all the land. <laughs> And I'm here tonight with my guitar in hand, and I'm standing out here looking at this amazing crowd full of people, and I have this vision, and I'm having a flashback. And it started while I was backstage, and I saw y'all walking in, I had this flashback of my very first concert. My very first concert was in this magical place called Barnes & Noble's Bookstore. <laughs> the first time I ever saw my name in lights. Okay, well actually it was just in the parking lot lights, but still it was close. It was in my hometown of Downersville, Illinois. I never been there in nine years. I walked up to the front door of Barnes and Nobles. They told me, uh, we can't pay you. We'll let you sing your songs here, but we're not gonna pay you. We'll give you free coffee though, and you can have a tip jar. So that's a deal, that's a deal. So I'm sure. I walk up to the front door of Barnes and Nobles the night of my first concert, waiting to see my name in lights, sort of. And there was a flyer on the front door that said, Tonight, at Barnes & Noble, live music by Mark West. <laughs> if you don't know why the person next to you is laughing, you need to take a look at your ticket and where you are tonight. Because that is not my name. The night of my first concert, that didn't stop me. I walked in as Mark West, proud as I I set up to play the four songs I had written. My only plan was to play them over and over again and hope people didn't notice it was the same song. <laughs> the good and the bad news was only two people came that night. They were called my mother and my father. <laughs> Somebody say, oh. Aww. During the middle of my first song, my dad walks up and puts a $20 bill in the <laughs> I said, Dad, get out of here. What are you doing? I said, I'm setting the bait, son. If people see a 20 in your tip jar, they're going to think you're awesome. <laughs> that night at my first concert at Barnes & Noble's, I went home with $20, <laughs> a free pound of coffee, and a dream that was very much alive, and that dream was that someday, someday I won't always be playing for mom and dad at Barnes & Noble's, someday I'll be playing for a packed house in magical places like South Bay, Indiana, and that day has come! And with that dream intact, I moved to Nashville, Tennessee. And when I got to Nashville, Tennessee, I decided that I was going to uh, make it big. And I would go anywhere I could go to find a free meal. And I found out that my married friends were good for free meals. I had one friend who was married. And so I'd go over and just hang out at their house at mealtime, and it would get awkward, and so they would just feel bad for me and invite me to stay. And my married friends, they had this little boy named Jace, and he was four years old. A little four-year-old boy named Jace, the coolest kid I ever met. He knew every Matthew West song, and I only hang out with people who know the words of my song. <laughs> but I noticed this little boy, he inspired a song that I wrote, by the way. He inspired it because when it was time for bed, Jace didn't like to go to bed. Imagine that, a four-year-old who doesn't want to go to bed at this time. So he'd run up to his dad and say, Dad, I love you. I love you more than ice cream. And give him a big hug, and his dad would say, Jace, I love you more than Oreos, and I go to bed. I don't even think Jace would like to bed, no. He would go on and on, Dad, I love you more than cookies. And Jace's dad would say, I love you more than motorcycles, now get to bed. On and on, they'd play, I love you more than this, I love you more than that. Well, one day, I was hungry, and so I went to my friend's house. Why? For a free meal. Are you paying attention tonight? Are you with me? <laughs> The only problem is my friends weren't there, but I knew where the spare key was, so I left myself. As I walked up to the refrigerator door to make myself a meal, something stopped me. It was a picture. 
Some people say the finest artwork in the land is found in the museums in France and Italy. I say some of the finest artwork in the land is found on our refrigerator door. This little boy drew a picture for his dad, who, by the way, was the one who adopted him when he was born in Florida to a single mom who didn't want him. He drew a picture for his dad to proclaim just how big his love for his dad was. It was a picture of a bright yellow sunshine. And then with the help of his sister, he scribbled these words that inspired me to write this song. Dear Dad, I love you more than the sun. I looked at that picture and I felt like my creator was whispering those same words to my heart. Dear Dad, don't you ever forget that you are deeply loved and you always will be. Now for some reason, my friends were working construction in their house and the construction workers had moved their piano right next to their refrigerator in the kitchen. So I sat down and wrote these words. And would you sing it with me? I love you more than the sun and the stars. And you shine for me too. Say I love you yesterday and today and tomorrow. I say I can end again. Well, I Oh, yeah. Well, I love you more. And there's one dude trying to start the wave. He looks kind of ridiculous because nobody's joining him. He's all alone, but he doesn't seem to care. He's in his own little world. Hey, I should write a song about that. And maybe sing it later. Now he's embarrassed, so he's sitting down. So why don't we make him feel like he's not so weird? And everybody do the way tonight, like we're at a Notre Dame football game. That's not the way I was talking about. Wait, that dude got it. That dude is going to lead us in the wave. Stand up, dude. Along with the other dude who did Okay. Seriously, people, have we never done the wave? This is the first time ever we're going to do the wave in a church. Should we do it? Yeah. Uh, this, this concert's already lost all control. Okay, Set. Go. Okay, I'm going to record this, and then you're going to post it later, okay? <laughs> this is... You have to do mine too. Okay, I'm on this lady's phone. I'm on this lady's phone. I think it's going to I'm so confused right now. Okay, we're at a Matthew West concert in South Bend, Indiana, and we're going to do the wave, because that's the way we do it. Ready? One, two, three.
come on, we're gonna sing our victory song tonight. Say, what love the Father has lavished in will call us, then we should be called His children. Well, I am a child of the one true King. Say, what love the Father has lavished in will call us, we should be called His Tell me who you are tonight. So I had to lean in close to hear what he was saying. And I remember he said, hey, Matthew, do you know my favorite Bible verse? I said, what is it? He said, it's uh, John 9, verses 1 through 3. He said, uh, it's the verse where the disciples and Jesus, they see this blind man. The disciples ask Jesus, Jesus, why was this man born blind? Was it because he sinned? Or because his parents sinned, you know? And uh, Tim said, do you know what Jesus said to them? He must have been able to see it in my eyes that I was ashamed I hadn't memorized that verse. He said, don't worry, I'll tell you. Jesus said, no, this man was born blind so that the works of God might be displayed through him. This man was born blind so that the works of God might be displayed through him. And I looked at Tim. I said, Tim, you know what that verse is about, don't you? And he got that great big smile, that amazing, perfect smile on his face. He said, yeah, I'm here for a greater purpose. And I know the world see God in me. <laughs> that conversation was the reason why the words of the British say that. Wonderfully made, so the world can't see the works of God on display. So let your doubts and your fears and your questions fade away. You don't have to wonder, you are wonderfully made. Perfectly beautiful in every way. God never makes a mistake. You are wonderfully, wonderfully made. When I first asked for stories, I, 24 hours, I thought, maybe I need to get away for a while. <laughs> so I rented this cabin. And I went away to this cabin, and I spent two months there. Every single day I read stories. 
But the cabin wasn't too far from home because my wife wouldn't allow that. <laughs> 20 minutes away from home, but it felt like a different world. So I'd go off to this cabin and pretend that I was, you know, Grizzly Adams. And I read stories, and this was one of the first ones I read from Michelle, St. Joseph, Michigan. This is a first for everything, man. First time ever doing a wave at a concert. First time people in Indiana actually cheered for Michigan. You guys are weird. Man. I like you. Have you ever felt the pain of middle school? It's the first line of her story. I have through my son, Connor. There are many things people don't know about him. I wish they did. He was born premature. He's had an uphill climb ever since he was born. He's got a learning disability. He struggles on a daily basis. Sometimes he thinks of himself as stupid, but he works harder than anyone I know. This mom kind of ripped my heart out, broke my heart, you know? And she made me wonder if maybe she'd found my junior high diary. I felt the pain of middle school. I was, uh, I was overweight as a kid at Willow Creek Elementary, where I first found out at recess that math conveniently rhymed with another word. And uh, you know, one of the reasons I was overweight is actually my dad's fault, because my my dad's idea of exercise as kids was we would take a bike ride to Dairy Queen, <laughs> and then you know it's. You're not supposed to ride a bike for 30, you know, until 30 minutes after. No way. So, maybe it's swimming, but uh, we. So we called my mom for a ride home. We put our bikes in the trunk of the station. <laughs> True story. Thanks for laughing at my pain. But I, I, I thought about this kid, Connor, man, and uh, we had a show in Michigan. We were playing at Unity Fest, and uh, so we just thought, well, let's just make a stop on our way to Unity Fest. So we actually drove the bus uh, right up into their front yard. And I, I want to meet this kid, you know? Little did I know this kid would become uh, a friend of mine, you know? Someone who I get to get updates on his life, and his track meets, and how God's working in his life, and how he went on to uh, overcome that time of bullying, and to know that God didn't make a mistake when he made him either. I got to go on Fox News with him in New York, and he got to tell his story. It's the hardest thing to give away, the last thing on your mind today. It always goes to those who don't deserve. It's the opposite of how you feel. When the pain they cause is just to real taste Everything you have to see the word Forgive me Forgive me rise in the face of all your pride Pulls away the mad inside It's always anger's own worse than me Jury and the judge say you got a right to hold a grudge. It's the whisper in your ears saying, Set it free. Forgive me. Forgive me.
You can even set a prisoner free. There is no end to what its power can do. So just let it go and be amazed by what you see through eyes of grace. The prisoner that it really pleases you. Give me. Forgive me. Forgive me. Oh, forgiveness. Forgiveness. You say, Tim, show me how. take hold of the power with all your might is to find out who the true source of that power is. It's not within us. It comes from God, our creator, the one who made you is the one who's going to put power within you and shine through your story in a powerful way. And while you're all standing here tonight, we're going to pray in just a moment as we close out the night. But before we pray, I just want to connect a dot here. Um, you notice all these stories we shared with you from Jordan all the way to the end and even the stories I shared with you earlier but, but do you know what one common thread that runs through each one of these stories they're different names, different faces different experiences, different chapters, different locations unique and different no two the same and yet they all share one thing in common, you know what it is this is what struck me now one single story that we heard tonight came from a person who chose to share with us about the best day in their life. Instead, they would share from the worst. Jordan didn't write to me and tell me about his proudest moment and the achievements he made in his life. No, he chose to bring into the light a shameful part of his past called addiction so that we could see how God had rescued him. Right? Rebecca didn't polish it up and say, oh, my family's perfect. Instead, she said, no, my family's jacked up. <laughs> but look what God has done to change my direction. I'm married now to a principal of a Christian school, and I got two kids, and the dysfunction is in our past. You know? I mean, one by one by one, people wrote to us about their limitations, their tragedies, these, these broken chapters of your story. Now, why would they choose to do that? Why would they choose to do that? And then let me take it around the country and share it with audiences everywhere. Well, I believe it's because every single one of these people, and this is what inspires me, Connor, is because they've had that aha moment. They've discovered that God truly can use each one of our stories, but we might be surprised by what part of our stories he's getting ready to shine through the brightest. You see, oftentimes, we become the deciding factor, and we decide for God what part of our stories we're gonna let him use. So if you're anything like me, it's like this. Okay, God, I made a list of all my good stuff. I can sing a little bit, so use that. Y'all, you know, maybe sometimes I'm funny. Use that. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, I'll clean myself up real good. You, use all my good stuff. You know? This is what I've learned through these stories is that all the creators look at it. My child, I know about all your good stuff. I'm the reason you have it. 
But I know about all the not so good stuff. I know about your weakest moment. I know about the greatest mistake you've ever made in your life. The one that you still have a hard time forgiving yourself for. I know about what's going on in your family. I know about the things that you'd rather just hide away so that the people in church think that you're doing fine. I see it all. There are no secrets. Nothing is hidden from God. And you know what he says to you? I see it all, and I love you still. And I have a plan for you. So once and for all, hand me all of your story. The good, the bad, and the ugly. The most broken chapter of your story. And let me heal you once and for all. We were singing it at the beginning of tonight. There's only grace. There's only love. There's only mercy. And it's enough. We were laughing about our lifeguard, right? And then this is the beauty of it all. Our lifeguard has come all the way in the form of a Savior on a cross. Why would he do that? So that you and me could live our lives pretending that we're okay, but still really be walking wounded? No. God sent his son Jesus to be wounded so that we could be healed once and for all. So tonight I want to invite you to do something. I want you to close your eyes. Nobody looking around. It's every eye closed. And while your eyes are closed, I want you to picture something for me. I want you to picture a name tag, like the one we saw when we were singing earlier. Hello, my name is. And there's that blank space. And I want you to picture that name tag being put right on your shirt, right there. And I want you to take a moment while you hear the music and just... It's going to be quiet. I just want you to think about some of the names that you've allowed to occupy your name tag. Maybe it's a name that was put there because of some choices you've made. Maybe it's addict. Maybe it's, uh, you know, mistakes that you're just embarrassed about. Maybe it's names that somebody else has put there. I want you to think about some of those lies that you've allowed to own you. I want you to ask the Lord to show you some names that you're still hanging on to that you know you need to let go. Let's take a moment just to do that. Tonight I want you to, with your eyes still closed, I want you to picture something else for me. I want you to picture what Jesus did on the cross for you and for me that? You picture a Savior carrying his cross? And you picture the fact that he would allow himself to be crucified even though he could have ended it or stopped it at any point. He was beaten beyond recognition and then he shed blood. I want you to picture that name tag and all the lies that you've ever believed or been made to believe about yourself being washed away by the precious blood. And I want you to picture the hand of your creator giving you a new name tag and writing down your true identity as simply his child. Now tonight if you're here, every eye still closed, and you'd say, you know what? I've got some name tags that I don't want to carry around anymore. I want to lay down some of those old identities, and I know that it's time for me to start fully walking in my true identity, knowing who I am in Christ, a child of the one true King. Maybe you've never made a relationship with Christ a priority. Maybe you've never said yes to Jesus. Or maybe you're a Christian and you're just still hanging on to some of the old stuff. The Bible says if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. That old can be gone. You could leave here tonight a different person than you came in. It's true. That's not some made-up thing. Maybe you're here tonight. Nobody else is looking around. You just say, hey, tonight right here, I'm making a choice to lay down some old names and some old name tags, and I'm taking up my true identity in Christ. I want you to raise your hand so I can see you because I want to remember you when I'm praying. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. All over this place. I see you guys. Yeah. Amen. Amen. You can put your hands down. Can you sing with me? Let's lift our voices safe. What love the Father 